So now that you know the basics of atomic absorption and atomic emission spectroscopy, we need to talk about all of the attachments that I can sell you to make the machine do its job a little bit better or a little bit easier. Now, these are just that. They are attachments or modifications to the existing piece of equipment in order for it to do a better job. And maybe it's something in, in specifically that you want to look for. But overall, these are attachments or modifications to the basic AA instrument itself. And the first one that we're going to talk about is called a graphite furnace. Now, a graphite furnace sometimes is a little hard for people to understand because we do not have a graphite furnace. And I can't show you what a graphite furnace looks like in person. However, I can at least explain to you the purpose of a graphite furnace and how it's different than the traditional AA or AE instrument. All right. So first off, a uh, graphite furnace is typically abbreviated with a GF and you would see an AA after it or an S after it. Graphite furnace atomic emission or absorption spectrometer. Uh, and sometimes the S is left off, of course, because we know kind of uh, that it's already a spectrophotometer. So the GF in front stands for graphite furnace. And the first thing that I want you to think of is your stovetop in the kitchen. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what does this have anything to do with the machine? Uh, this is a kitchen, not a laboratory. Well, the kitchen is a laboratory. I hate to break it to you. Right, You mix things in it, you use the right cooking utensils, and as long as you use the right pan and the right temperature, then you're going to end up making something completely different than maybe what you did the day before. Well, that's the thing here. A graphite furnace is just a tool. It is a utensil that we can use in our kitchen called the laboratory in order to do our job a little bit better or maybe a little differently. So the graphite furnace, a normal AA instrument, is basically the stovetop, all right? You want to think of a frying pan here. Sometimes you need the frying pan. Sometimes you want to make an omelet. Sometimes you want to fry a piece of bacon. And a lot of times you need a skillet in order to do that. And you put it on the stovetop and you allow that process to happen. And that's traditionally what goes on in a kitchen. However, that's not the only cooking method that you have available to you. So in the kitchen, if you're not using the stove, then you can use the oven. And the oven is what I'm going to refer to as the graphite furnace. The oven is a closed container that you put your cake into and you allow this closed container to cook and bake your cake for 35 to 40 minutes, right? Well, the graphite furnace is very similar to an oven. It is a closed container that allows you to perform your measurements when it concerns the metals. Now, how does that happen? All right, well, if we take a look at the diagram, of a atomic um, um, absorption spectrophotometer. We see a light source that's typically here in front and that light source goes into a burner head and this burner head was basically a flame. And that light source comes out the other end and it goes into a detector. Now I'm leaving out all the other pieces but these are the ones that I want to focus on here. All right, so this was a flame, and not only that, but it was open, meaning that I can see the flame. I can see smoke coming from the flame. There's fumes that come from the top of the flame that have to be exhausted or vented out of the room. These are things that are open to me that I can see, that I can touch if I want to. This is kind of like my stove top. Right? If I'm cooking using the stovetop, then it's exposed to everything else around it, including myself. All right, well, I can modify the existing AA instrument 
And instead of a frying pan, I can decide to bake. And I do it in a closed container. So what happens in a graphite furnace is that here where the burner head is located, there is going to be an attachment. And that attachment is basically a box. I'm going to call it a black box. But this is kind of like an oven. There is no open flame associated with the graphite furnace AA. It is a heated box that's very similar to an oven. And this can go to very high temperatures. But more importantly, it is closed. And because it's closed, then that means it can increase the concentrations of the metals that you're trying to analyze for. It's not going to let them escape. In the frying pan method, or the traditional AA, this flame was open. And as soon as the metals atomize, then those atomized vapors basically can escape and get sucked out of the room, right? However, if I'm in a closed container and I do not allow those metals to escape and I keep them kind of concentrated in the small area, then what this machine allows me to do, it allows me to measure lower concentrations than parts per million. And that's one of the reasons that people use a graphite furnace. They do it because in a closed system, this prevents the escape of the metals. And because of that, it allows me to make measurements in the lower levels of something that I can't get to with traditional AA, right? So we're talking about part per billion very easily. I don't, do not have a problem with part per billion levels when it concerns the graphite furnace. So it is more sensitive. It allows me to go lower in the concentration ranges, but it is a sealed chamber, and I need you to think of it like the oven part of a stove and not the frying pan part of the stove. The box does get vented. Uh, you have to get rid of everything that was in there before, but those kind of details we're not going to talk about. It's just the concept of what a graphite furnace actually is. Okay, So here's a slide, and in this slide it basically will give you a diagram like we just drew on the graphite furnace. So we still have to use a light source that goes into the oven chamber now, and the oven chamber will do a before and after view of what's happening to the light and that eventually goes over into the detector. The graphite inside view, it looks something similar to this. Uh, the light beam in this diagram starts over to the right or to the right hand side and it points toward the left hand side. So the light beam goes through what would be the burner head here in the middle and then it goes out the other end to the detector. The graphite furnace you see is actually pointed here and there's a big block that goes all the way around where the burner head would be. You also see what they call a graphite tube and this graphite tube is what basically gets heated up in a way and keeps your sample kind of sealed into the chamber. There's a larger picture of the graphite tube down here below Here's the tube, and you see a platform on the inside, and that platform uh, is basically inside of the tube, inside of the instrument, and there to do the measurements with your sample. There is an internal gas flow that comes in and out, and there's an external gas flow that goes in and out as well. But again, we're not going to get into the specifics. We just now are familiar with GF, and we know what GF is really meant to do. Here's a real picture of the internals of a graphite furnace. It looks a little different than maybe what you would expect or what you would uh, envision with the atomic absorption, uh, but it's not because you're wrong in thinking what it would look like. 
it's because that this is really kind of a bad picture. All right, so I can give you a better picture of a graphite furnace, and it looks something like this. So this is very similar to the AA that we have now. Uh, a lamp goes out one end, and it goes into the detector on the other end. And here, instead of the burner head, this is where you would see the graphite furnace piece itself. And that's what you're seeing here in the middle of the block. Uh, here in the center, you almost see the graphite tube that's on the inside of there that heats it up uh, and kind of closes off your sample from the outside. Here's an overall picture of the Perkin Elmer graphite furnace AA. And this graphite furnace you can't really see, but the take home message here is that these AA systems look very similar to all the other AA systems that might be sitting on the shelf. The only difference is the piece that goes into the sample compartment. Uh, is it a burner head or is it a closed container that we call the oven or the graphite furnace? Uh, here you kind of see an auto sampler tray that's sitting in front uh, that will take the sample up and shoot it inside of the machine to get some measurements with. So that's the story with graphite furnace. Uh, you know, it's good to use, uh, especially if you're working in the lower levels. Uh, we do not have one in our laboratory at the time that this video is recorded. However, in the future, there is a possibility that we would venture off into this field. But there is a better instrument that allows us to do very similar things uh, that will allow us to go even lower than a graphite furnace. Uh, and we'll talk about what that other instrument or modification is in the next video. So if we had a choice, we would go with this other piece of equipment. It's a little more expensive, but it basically will do the same thing that a graphite furnace or an A8 instrument will do, but it does a much better job at it. So in the next video, that's what we'll focus on, and that's what we'll talk about. It's called the ICP system.